Welcome to the Abe tutorial series video number seven. In this video we will cover the Golden Gate Assembler and Golden Gate Designer tools. Golden Gate reactions use type 2S restriction enzymes to assemble multiple fragments together in a scarless reaction. The Golden Gate Designer designs the reaction to generate PCR Pro PCR primers to generate PCR products that can be used in a Golden Gate to assemble um, as many as 35 fragments. The data for the Golden Gate Designer tool is from this paper from New England Bio Labs, where they have um, determined empirically the cross reactivity of all possible three and four base single strand overhangs and a ligation reaction. So the designer tool uses that empirical data to design overhangs that have very low cross reactivity. So when you open the designer tool, you can either do that from the Golden Gate um, designer under the main tools menu or from the Golden Gate toolbar icon. You can choose a type 2S restriction enzyme. This will list the ones that you presently have in your enzyme set. If you have no enzymes available to the tool, go into the enzyme selection tool, go to the main menu item enzymes, click add Golden Gate enzymes, and choose any of the enzymes that you would like to use from here. If you, when you check these boxes and press OK, they'll be added to your present enzyme set. You can then do File, Save, Current Enzymes as default, and those will be saved um, for the next time that you open APE. But in this case, we already have um, several enzymes available to us. If we choose BSA1 as our um, restriction enzyme that we'd like to use for our Golden Gate, then choose the L4440, the same plasmid that we used in the previous video for the ligation assembler tool, ligation assembly tool. We can choose um, all but selected so that we replace the selected region with our um, inserted fragments. We find that the BSA, there is a BSA1 site present in that um, fragment of DNA. So we have to choose a different restriction enzyme to do a Golden Gate reaction. If we choose BSMB1, we find that the designer says that that fragment is OK. Now we can add an additional fragment to our Golden Gate reaction. In this case, our Exba PST fragment, also from the previous restriction ligation tool demonstration. At any time, you can choose to reverse complement any of these fragments. And if the fragment is short enough, you can choose to have the designer design it not as a PCR reaction with and designing PCR primers, but instead to design it as two single-stranded oligos that can be annealed together to generate the proper single-stranded overhangs to ligate into the Golden Gate reaction. You can choose um, any number of fragments, but for demonstration purposes, we will just do a two-fragment Golden Gate reaction. So if we choose Next, you see that it finds a total efficiency of 100% because the um, two overhangs that it has found have 0% um, cross-reactivity, which correlates to 100% um, efficiency. So. There's no um, empirically found cross-reactivity of these two single-stranded overhangs in a Golden Gate reaction. Then you can see that it is designed um, PCR primers. The um, melting temperature to those um, templates has, was set within the set defaults um, area. Then it has the BSMB1 restriction fragment and it has extra nucleotide tails 
so that the restriction enzyme has an efficient cutting. That all of these are set within the defaults section of the tool. So once the um, primers have been designed and you're satisfied with the efficiency, you can generate product. If the efficiency is not 100%, you can recalculate from the um, from the position that the calculation is in now, or you can restart the calculation if it's in a local minimum, and sometimes that will get you to a higher total efficiency. If you click Generate Product, it will generate a new sequence window with the um, product of the Golden Gate reaction. And if you are um, not interested in designing any new Golden Gate reactions, you can click Done. So you can see that the product is the fusion of the um, same fragment that we saw in the restriction ligation assembly tool with the same L4440 backbone. But now we have four new features. We have forward primer one, reverse primer one, forward primer two, and reverse primer two. And if you use the x-ray window, you can see the um, primers at each of the two junctions of the fragments. Then if you look in the feature table, you see that these primers have a little triangle that can be used to display further information. And you see that the primer sequence has been saved within the feature for each of these uh, PCR product, for each of these PCR primers. Then finally, if you open the comments section of the window, you can see that the tool has added the um, notation that this was generated as a Golden Gate reaction with BSMB1. There was a PCR with this template and these two primers generating a 2,641 base product. There are two melting temperatures given for each primer. The first melting temperature is the melting temperature of this primer to the given template. And this melting temperature is the melting temperature of the entire of the primer to the PCR product itself once the five prime extensions have been added. There's a second PCR product with a second template, forward primer two and reverse primer two, and the size of that PCR. And then finally, there is a section called primer order where there are um, four primers given that you can copy and paste into an order form for ordering those primers from a synthesis company. You can save this for later use and all of the um, primers and PCR conditions will be saved for use when you're ready to do the reaction. So that's the Golden Gate Designer, but there's a second Golden Gate tool, the Golden Gate Assembler, which you can get to either from shift clicking on the toolbar or from the tools menu, Golden Gate Assembler. And the Assembler is used when you already have fragments within a library that are designed to be combinatorially um, connected using a Golden Gate reaction. So this tool begins again with choosing an enzyme and usually the um, library that you're using will tell you in advance which enzyme the library was designed for. And I'm using a set of DNA sequences designed by Matt Schwartz in the Jorgensen lab that are designed to be assembled with SAP1. I have already opened the four um, fragments that get put together to generate the final product. And now you can see that the Golden Gate assembly tool 
is giving me the option of choosing any one of these starting fragments as a potential uh, Golden Gate input. So if I use PMBC2, it then tells me that there is a TGG single strand overhang that then ligates to PMBC3 that then ends with an ATG overhang. Then there is a choice of any of possible inputs, all of which have an ACG overhang next that then goes to PMBC4, GTA, and makes a circular product. So this particular design is such that there is a single ordered um, oligo pool, and each one of the different oligos within the pool has the same golden gate overhangs, but each one encodes a different mutation within the central coding region of, um, of a cDNA. So if you add all of these oligos into a single pot reaction, you can generate golden, in one reaction, a golden gate reaction that has all of these different oligos ligated all at once, or individually, and each one of the colonies will have one of these library um, components. So then you can screen those for functionality of the protein. So we can generate, for example, the product when oligo one is inserted, and you can see that now there is <clears throat> a, a new sequence generated that has um, a different sequence here in the middle of this coding region. So then you can see in the comments that this was generated as a Golden Gate reaction and the individual um, plasmids the restriction enzymes, the region that was um, inserted to generate that sequence. So that's the Golden Gate assembly tool. That's the end of video seven.